For 80 years, aviation enthusiasts have argued about one question. Which propeller-driven fighter was the fastest in World War II? Today, we're settling it. Based on documented maximum speeds in level flight, from official test data, wartime reports, and verified performance trials. Here are the eight fastest propeller fighters that actually flew during World War II. These aren't prototypes that never left the ground or paper designs that existed only in engineers' dreams. Every aircraft on this list saw production, and most faced enemy fire in actual combat. Their speeds were achieved through cutting-edge engineering, desperate innovation, and the relentless push to dominate the skies in humanity's most devastating conflict. Let's count down from number eight to the absolute fastest propeller fighter that ruled the skies in 1945. At number eight is Germany's Fokker Wolf FW 190D-9 reaching a maximum speed of 426 miles per hour. Known as the Dora, or Long Nose variant, this fighter represented a dramatic evolution of the radial engine FW190 series that had terrorized Allied pilots since 1941. The D9 replaced the earlier BMW radial engine with an inline Junkers Jumo 213A requiring an extended nose that gave the aircraft its distinctive appearance. This change transformed the FW190 from a brutal low-altitude brawler into a high-performance fighter capable of engaging Allied bombers at altitude and holding its own against the latest American and British fighters. Production began in August 1944, and over 700 were built before war's end. Luftwaffe pilots praised its improved high-altitude performance while maintaining the excellent roll rate and robust construction that made the FW190 series legendary. In the desperate final months of the war, the Dora 9 fought against overwhelming odds in the defense of Germany. Number 7 is Britain's Hawker Tempest 5, capable of 435 miles per hour. Developed as an improved version of the earlier Hawker Typhoon, the Tempest featured a thinner wing profile and more powerful Napier Sabre engine that transformed it into one of the RAF's most effective low-altitude fighters. The Tempest entered service in April 1944, arriving just in time to face Germany's Vi-1 flying bombs. Its exceptional speed at low altitude made it the most successful V-1 interceptor of the war with Tempest squadrons accounting for over 800 of the pilotless weapons. British pilots discovered they could catch the V-1s in level flight and either shoot them down or use their wingtips to flip them off course. But the Tempest proved equally deadly in air combat. Its combination of speed, firepower, and excellent handling made it a feared opponent for German fighters. In the final year of the war, Tempest squadrons racked up impressive kill ratios while supporting the Allied advance across Europe. Many pilots considered it the finest piston engine fighter Britain ever produced. At number six is the legendary Supermarine Spitfire Mark 14, reaching 446 miles per hour. This variant represented the ultimate evolution of the iconic fighter that had saved Britain during the darkest days of 1940. But the MK-14 was a radically different machine from those early Spitfires. The key was the Rolls-Royce Griffin 65 engine, producing over 2,000 horsepower compared to the 1,000 horsepower Merlin engines of earlier marks. This massive power increase required strengthening the entire airframe and enlarging the tail surfaces to handle the additional torque. The result was a Spitfire that could climb like a rocket and fight effectively at altitudes where earlier versions struggled. First flown in January 1943, the MK-18 entered squadron service in early 1944. It immediately proved itself against the latest German fighters and was particularly effective at intercepting high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft 
and the new German jets. The Griffin's power gave it acceleration that shocked German pilots accustomed to outrunning earlier Spitfire variants. Over 900 were built, serving with distinction until the war's end. Before we get to the top five fastest fighters, I'd love to know where you're watching from and which of these aircraft you think deserves the number one spot. Drop a comment below and let me know if any of these rankings surprise you. And if you're enjoying this deep dive into World War II aviation, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. Number five is America's Grumman F-8F Bearcat, capable of 455 miles per hour. Designed as the ultimate lightweight carrier fighter, the Bearcat represented Grumman's attempt to create the most powerful aircraft that could operate from escort carriers, the small Jeep carriers that proved so valuable in the Pacific War. Engineers started with the massive Pratt & Whitney R2800 engine producing 2,100 horsepower and built the smallest, lightest airframe that could handle that power. The result was extraordinary. The Bearcat could climb to 10,000 feet in just 94 seconds, faster than any American fighter of the era. Its roll rate was phenomenal, and despite its small size, it packed four 20-millimeter cannons or 6.50 caliber machine guns. The Bearcat's timing was unfortunate. It entered service in February 1945, too late to see combat in World War II. Only 24 had reached operational squadrons when Japan surrendered in August, but its performance impressed everyone who flew it. Test pilots called it the finest handling fighter of the propeller era. In the post-war years, it became the Mount of the Blue Angels and set multiple time-to-climb records that stood for decades. At number four is Germany's Focke Wolf, Ta 152H, reaching 469 miles per hour. This high-altitude interceptor represented Germany's desperate attempt to counter American and British bombers operating above 30,000 feet, where most German fighters struggled to perform. The Tai 152H featured extended wings spanning nearly 48 feet, a pressurized cockpit, and a Junkers Jumo 213E engine with a two-stage supercharger. This combination gave it exceptional performance above 40,000 feet, altitude where most Allied fighters were gasping for air. At these heights, the Ta 152H could outclimb, outrun, and outmaneuver virtually any opponent. But the aircraft arrived far too late. Production began in November 1944, and perhaps 150 were built before war's end. Few reached operational units, and even fewer saw combat. Those that did earned respect from Allied pilots who encountered them. On April 14, 1945, Oberfeldwebel Willi Reschke Flying a Ta 152H engaged four P 51 Mustangs at high altitude, shooting down two and damaging a third before escaping, a testament to the aircraft's capabilities. The Ta 152H symbolized Germany's technological desperation in the final months. It was an outstanding design that arrived when Germany lacked the fuel, pilots, and infrastructure to employ it effectively. What might have been a game-changer in 1943 became a footnote in 1945. Number three is the Republic P-47M Thunderbolt, capable of 472 miles per hour. This specialized variant of the famous Jug was built for one purpose, catching and destroying Germany's fast, high-altitude fighters and jets that had begun appearing over Europe in late 1944. The P-47M featured a specially modified Pratt & Whitney R-280057 engine with an improved turbocharger system, water injection for emergency power, and various weight-saving modifications. These changes transformed the already fast Thunderbolt into a high-altitude interceptor that could engage German jets and reach speeds that shocked pilots accustomed to flying earlier P-47 variants. Only 130 P-47s were built, 
entering service in December 1944 with the 56th Fighter Group, the only unit to operate the type. The 56th had specifically requested a faster Thunderbolt to counter the increasing German jet threat. In practice, the P-47M proved temperamental. Its high-performance engine required meticulous maintenance, and early models suffered from severe engine failures that grounded the fleet for weeks. Once these problems were resolved, the P-47M proved devastating. It combined the Thunderbolt's legendary toughness and heavy armament with speed that could match or exceed virtually any German piston engine fighter. The 56th Fighter Group flew P-47s until war's end, racking up kills against both conventional fighters and early jets. It represented the absolute limit of what could be achieved with the basic P-47 design. At number two was Germany's extraordinary Dornier Du 335 File, the Arrow, reaching 474 miles per hour. This was unlike any fighter aircraft that flew during World War II, featuring a revolutionary push-pull configuration with engines mounted at both nose and tail, driving separate propellers. The concept was brilliant. By mounting one Daimler-Benz DB603 engine conventionally in the nose and another behind the cockpit driving a pusher propeller at the tail, Dornier eliminated the drag of wing-mounted engines while doubling the available power. The result was a fighter with straight-line speed that exceeded almost everything in the sky, combined with heavy armament and armor that would have made it formidable in combat. But like so many late-war German designs, the Do 335 arrived far too late and in far too few numbers. Development delays meant the first prototype didn't fly until October 1943. Production aircraft began reaching test units in early 1945, but perhaps only 37 were completed before the war ended. None saw genuine combat, though several were evaluated in high-speed trials that confirmed their exceptional performance. The Du-335 represented German engineering at its most innovative and most desperate. It was fast, heavily armed, and unlike anything else flying. But its complexity, late arrival, and Germany's collapsing industrial base meant it never had a chance to prove itself in battle. Allied test pilots who flew captured examples after the war universally praised its speed and handling, calling it one of the finest piston engine fighters ever built, had it arrived two years earlier. And, at number one, the fastest propeller fighter of World War II, the North American P-51H Mustang, reaching 487 miles per hour. This ultimate evolution of the legendary Mustang represented the absolute peak of American piston engine fighter design. The P-51H was a comprehensive redesign, not just a tweaked P-51D. Engineers stripped nearly 1,500 pounds from the airframe through lighter construction techniques, a redesigned fuselage, and removal of unnecessary equipment. They installed the powerful Packard 5 1650-9 engine, the American-built version of the Rolls-Royce Merlin, with water injection for emergency power. The result was a fighter that could nearly touch 500 miles per hour in level flight. But speed wasn't everything. The weight reduction transformed the Mustang's handling characteristics. The P-51H rolled faster, climbed quicker, and maneuvered more nimbly than any previous variant. Test pilots called it the finest handling Mustang ever built. It retained the P-51's famous range, over 850 miles on internal fuel, meaning it could escort bombers deep into Japan while outrunning virtually any defender. Production began in February 1945 and 555 had been delivered by August when Japan surrendered. They arrived too late for combat in Europe, and while some reached the Pacific, none engaged in air combat before the war ended. 
But the P-51H represented what was possible at the absolute edge of propeller fighter design. It was faster, lighter, and more capable than anything else with a piston engine. In a war that drove aviation technology to unprecedented heights, the P-51H stood at the summit. These eight fighters represent the absolute pinnacle of propeller-driven aviation technology. Each was designed during humanity's most desperate conflict, when nations poured unlimited resources into gaining even the slightest advantage in the sky. The engineers who designed them and the pilots who flew them pushed the boundaries of what was possible with piston engines and propellers. What's remarkable is how close these top speeds are. Just 61 miles per hour separates the FW-190D-9 at number 8 from the P-51H at number 1. Every mile per hour came from countless hours of testing, incremental improvements, and desperate innovation under wartime pressure. Each aircraft on this list was a masterpiece of engineering that could mean the difference between life and death for the men who flew them. Speed, of course, wasn't everything in aerial combat. Maneuverability, firepower, range, reliability, and pilot skill all mattered enormously. But in a war where seconds could determine survival, where catching an enemy bomber before it reached its target could save thousands of lives, and where escaping superior numbers meant living to fight another day, speed was the ultimate advantage. Now you know the eight fastest propeller fighters of World War II, ranked by documented performance data. Disagree with the list? Think another aircraft deserves to be here? Let me know in the comments which fighter you believe was truly the fastest and why.